The last method we're going to discuss for solving systems is another algebraic method, and it's substitution. Now you know substitution means to replace. In this method of solving by substitution, you're going to evaluate one equation for a variable or expression from the second equation. Now students generally don't have difficulty substituting a value into a second equation, but it's the expression part that can be challenging. So to combat that, I would suggest that you keep a highlighter handy just as one strategy to help with that skill. All right, the steps for solving linear systems by substitution. Step one, solve one of the equations for one of the variables. And that's if it's not already set up that way. If you get a problem that has one of the equations already set up as x equals or y equals, then there's a good chance that substitution is the best method for solving that system. Step two, Substitute the expression from step one into the second equation in place of the variable you solved. And that's where you would use your highlighters to help you. When you do this second step, you will be down to one variable. So when you simplify that expression, you will have a value for one variable. So then the next step is to substitute that value back into the original equations and then solve for the other variable. And of course, step four is check. And if you check your answer in both equations and it works, then you can be confident that you've done it correctly. All right, let's look at some examples here. And I'm gonna zoom in so we can see. Example one, we are going to solve using these steps. Now, neither one is set up as x equals or y equals, so step one, we're going to solve one of the equations for one of the variables. So I'm going to take the first equation here, and I'm just going to write it in slope-intercept form to get it as y equals. So I'm going to add x to both sides. And students seem to prefer, uh, for whatever reason, solving for y, I think just because you're used to it, writing in slope-intercept form. So this becomes y equals x plus 1. All right, step two, substitute the expression from step one into the second equation. So here's where you might want a highlighter. So y is x plus one. So in the second equation, I'm gonna highlight y. So y is x plus one. So instead of y, I'm going to write x plus one. And remember, when you substitute in an expression, put it in parentheses, so that if there's any distribution of either a coefficient or distribution of a negative, you don't miss that. So when I substitute in here, oops, I'm still on my highlighter, 2x plus, and in place of y, I'm going to take this expression and I'm going to substitute or replace it, x plus 1, equals negative 2. Okay, so now I've rewritten, rewritten that equation replacing y with x plus 1. So I need to simplify. So I don't really have um, any distribution here since it's just, just a, a plus 1 or positive. So I'm going to combine my like terms. I've got a 2x and a 1x, which is 3x plus 1 equals negative 2. So see, I've eliminated one of the y's, y values by replacing it with that expression. So I can just simplify this equation and solve for x. So 3x equals negative 3, so x is negative 1. Now I'm going to substitute this value into one of the original equations and solve for the other variable. So I'm just going to plug this in. Let me get a different color highlighter here. How about green? I'm going to plug, that's not a highlighter, negative 1 into one of the original equations. So I'm going to just pick the simpler one, which is the first one here. So I've got negative x, which is negative 1, plus y equals 1. So negative 
negative 1 or negative 1 times negative 1 is 1 plus y equals 1. So subtract 1 from both sides and y equals 0. Now remember we always write our solution as an ordered pair. So my ordered pair x is negative 1, y is 0. Now I can plug that in to check. So I have negative, negative 1 plus 0 equals 1 and that checks and I have 2 times negative 1 plus 0 equals negative 2 and that also checks. Alright, example number 2. 3x plus y equals 5, 2x minus y equals 10. So again, the first thing I need to do is set up one of the equations to be in uh, y equals or, or x equals. Since both x's have a coefficient, I'm going to solve for y. I'm going to pick the first one so that I have all positive y's. So when I subtract 3x from both sides, I get y equals negative 3x plus 5. So again, I'm going to use my highlighter. I'm replacing this y, this expression right here, into the second equation. And notice I have a subtraction sign here, so just pay attention to the signs. That's an easy place to make a mistake. 2x minus Again, put this in parentheses. This is where I'm substituting in that expression I highlighted, 3x plus 5. Can you see where you might make a mistake with signs there? Equals 10. All right, so this time I'm going to distribute the negative. So I have 2x plus 3x minus 5 equals 10. I can combine my like terms. I have a 2x and a 3x. Just 5x minus 5 equals 10. Add 5 to both sides. 5x equals 15. So x equals 3. Okay, I'm going to go back and I'm going to substitute that into one of the original equations. Now you could substitute this 3 back in right here. The reason I don't is because if I made a mistake going from this step to this step, I might not catch it if I substitute into this equation. So always go back to one of your original equations. So I'm going to substitute my second color here. Substitute my 3 into the first equation. So I have, help if I get back to the pen, 3 times 3 plus y equals 5. So 3 times 3 is 9, plus y equals 5. Subtract 9, and y equals negative 4. So my solution is x is 3, y is negative 4. I'm going to plug it in to check. So I've got 3 times 3 plus negative 4 equals 5. So that's 9 plus negative 4 is 5. That checks. And then 2 times 3 minus negative 4 equals 10. So that's 6 minus negative 4. 6 plus 4 equals 10. Check. All right, we've got two practice problems here. So for the first one, if you notice... This x has a coefficient, this y has a coefficient, this y has a coefficient, but this x has a coefficient of 1. So you can solve for any of these, but the easiest one is going to be the one that has the coefficient of 1 already set up there for you. So I would choose this one, but if you want to do it another way, do it your way, and then you can double check and see if we have the same answer in the end. So this becomes x equals 4y minus 1. So I'm going to take my x this time. Here's my expression, and I'm going to plug it in to the other equation where x is. How many times am I going to do that before I learn? 2 times 
4y minus 1 plus 2y equals 3. Now notice here, because of my parentheses, I need to distribute that 2 to both terms. So I have 8y minus 2 plus 2y equals 3. Combine like terms, I have an 8y and a 2y. 10y minus 2 equals 3. Add 2 to both sides. 10y equals 5. Divide by 10. So y is, you can write it as 1 half or 0.5. Now I'm going to plug that back in to the other equation. So I have my 1 half and I'm going to plug it back in to, and it really doesn't matter. Uh, I'm going to plug it into this equation. So I've got x minus 4 times 1 half, or 0.5, equals negative 1. So x minus 2 is 4 times 1 half, or 1 half of 4 is 2, equals negative 1. Add 2 to both sides, and x equals 1. So my solution is 1, 1 half. All right, for the last practice problem, this one's kind of set up for you. The first step is already done. You have x equals 2y. So this is a good example of a problem that if you saw a system and you were told choose the best method, substitution would be good on this one because it's already set up. The first step's already done for you. So, you're... so since this is x, we're going to substitute this in for x right here. So I've got 2 times 2y plus 6y equals 15. So 2 times 2y is 4y plus 6y equals 15. 4y plus 6y is 10y equals 15. Divide by 10, so y is 1.5 or 3 halves if you prefer the fraction there. So now I'm going to substitute this 1.5 um, into either equation. I'm going to pick this one just because it is simpler in this case. So x, did it again, is 2 times 1.5. So x equals 3. So my ordered pair is 3, 1.5. So if I check my work, 2 times 3 plus 6 times 1.5 equals 15. So I've got 6 plus 9, that checks. And then x, which is 3, equals 2 times 1.5. 3 equals 3, check. Moving on to the next page. So now we've got some word problems to look at. A local high school collected $1,590 from 321 people who attended a football game. The price of each adult mission is $6. The child admission rate is $4. How many adult tickets and child tickets were sold that day? So here's one that we're going to set up. And we are going to do our same two equations like we normally do. The one is how many or the amount of tickets, which was 321 people. And then the other is uh, from the price. So the price, we've got adult admission is 6 and $4 for child admission rate. So let's define our variables. Um, I'm going to call x the adult price and y the child. Okay, so my first equation is going to be how many tickets total. So we know the adult and child together, they sold 321. 
And then the second equation is going to be coming from the price. And I just realized I forgot to highlight our total price, 1590 which is important. So adult emission is $6. So 6 times X and child emission is $4. So 4 times Y equals 1590 Okay, so now if I'm going to choose which equation I want to set up, I'm going to look at that first one. I think that one's going to be a little bit easier. So I'm going to subtract x from both sides. So I get y equals negative x plus 321. And now I'm going to substitute that y into the second equation. So I have 6x plus 4, and here's my y. So I'm going to put this in parentheses, negative x plus 321 equals 1590. So now I have to distribute that 4. So I have 6x minus 4x plus, quick calculation, 1284 equals 1590. I can combine my like terms. I have a 6x minus 4x, which is 2x plus 1,284 equals 1,590. I'm going to move this up here. So 1,590 minus 1,284 is 306. So 2x equals 306. So I just subtracted. Let me write this step in case you missed that. Uh, so now divide by 2, and x equals 153. Okay, that seems reasonable. So now I'm going to plug this value into the first equation for x. So 153 plus y equals 321. So y is... 321 minus 153, 168. So how many adult tickets and child tickets? So my ordered pair is 153 and 168. Since we've defined our variables, we know that that means 153 adult and 168 child. All right, for this practice problem, I want you to pause the video and try to set up the equation and then check and see if you set it up correctly before you solve. All right, just checking the setup here, I define my variables as X is model A and Y is model B. We know the total 22 cameras, so model A plus model B is 22. Model A costs 150, so there's my 150X. Model B costs 225, so there's my 225Y and a total of 3,900. Now I'm going to solve the first equation for y. So y equals negative x plus 22. You may choose to solve for whichever variable you want, but again, pause the video here and then come back and check and see if you solved correctly. Okay, let's check your work. So when you substitute it in negative x plus 22 for y here, this should have been the resulting expression. Uh, check your work. Make sure you combine like terms, paying attention to the negative sign here. And then at the end, you should have got x equals 14. Just something to note here, um, since we did end up with a lot of negatives, if you got an x equals a negative number, would that be reasonable? Can you sell negative cameras? No. So just when you do these problems, if you get a negative answer on a real world problem, that is sometimes okay if you're talking about a loss of something, but in this case, it's not reasonable. So just watch your signs and then substitute that 14 back in for X to find eight. So 14 model A's and eight model B's. All right, same thing uh, for practice number four. I want you to pause and set up the equations first and then check before you move on. Our two equations again are the number of quilts made and then how much fabric was used. So I define my variables as x is the large quilt and y is the small. 
and it doesn't matter if he did it opposite as long as you specify what your two variables are. So x plus y total, large and small total, is 15 quilts. A large quilt requires 8 yards, there's our 8x. Small quilt requires 3 yards, there's our 3y, and 90 yards of fabric. So now go ahead and solve, and pick your variable that you want to solve for. Uh, pause the video, and then come back and check your answer. Alright, I chose to solve for the first equation, y equals negative x plus 15. So this expression goes here for y, 8x plus 3 times negative x plus 15 equals 90. When I distributed it, I made sure to pay attention to my negative signs, so you should have 8x minus 3x, simplify, and x equals 9. Substitute that 9 back into the other equation, 9 plus y equals 15, so y equals 6. 9 large quilts, 6 small quilts.